A big thank you to our sponsor, iFixit, who fights for your right to repair and makes really cool tools in the process. If you need to fix your phone, laptop, or even a vacuum, iFixit has thousands of parts, tools, and free guides. Mercury, Mercury Stardust. She's a beacon of hope in the darkest night. Mercury, Mercury Stardust. She'll teach you how to make it all alright. Hey there, hi, my name is Mercury, and I'm the trans handy ma'am. My pronouns are she, her, and I teach compassionate DIY. We're here to help renters, LGBTQIA members, and anyone who's feeling left out in a DIY space. Hey guys, gals, and non-binary pals! Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Handy Ma'am Hotline. I am joined by our wonderful co-host, Maggie Conrad. Hey, everybody. Thank you, Maggie, for being here this week. Uh, Maggie, how you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I just ate uh, Lunchable, the best <laughs> kind of Lunchable, which is a uh, pizza kind. Any other kind of Lunchable is far inferior and should be <laughs> taken out and thrown into a dumpster. <laughs> But this Lunchable was amazing. Also, I really love these little, um, uh, God, what are these? Capri Suns. The little, little Capri Suns are mm-hmm. amazing. I got those specifically for you. Oh, did you really? <laughs> you know what I want? I just want an endless surprise of Capri Sun, but the apple kind. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. The apple juice kind. I love that kind. Nice. Because secretly, I'm a seven-year-old <laughs> child. I need my little juice box every day. Uh, Maggie, that being said, today we have five how-to questions, Mm -hmm. DIY questions, and they're all voicemails today, Uh which is a big special treat for us. And you and I, neither of us know (laughs) what they are. Our wonderful assistant, Ziggy, um, uh, you know, who's not named after uh, Ziggy Stardust, so no relation. Uh, <laughs> um, picked them all today. Yeah. And we, neither of us, have any <laughs> idea what we're getting ourselves going into. In, we're going in with our eyes closed. We're going to go in our <laughs> eyes closed. I'm a little bit terrified <laughs> because I know Ziggy as a person, uh-huh. and I think she's the kind of person who would actively fuck with me. Uh, <laughs> I think so. I think she is. I think I also heard her in the corner before the uh-huh. episode started laughing the entire time. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I being like, too. ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm a little terrified that uh this is gonna go south. It'll be an adventure. It's an adventure that is gonna be for the audience and you and I, <laughs> which seems like a bad idea. So Maggie, without further ado do. Are you ready to listen to the first question of the day? Let's do do it. Let's do do it. Hi, this is Tabitha Mercury. It's so nice to meet you, and I'm glad that you took my question. I'm redoing my bathroom, converting it from a shower tub installation to just a shower pan. It's extremely small, and I'm looking to either tile or do acrylic panels or something like that to keep water issues due to my mom, how she takes her shower, my entire bathroom ends up wet. If you can give me any suggestions on best for maintenance and resell, that would be amazing. Again, I want to know what the best option is to retile my bathroom walls or acrylic panels and that stuff and what's the pros and cons. Thank you. Bye. Well, Tabitha, it was really nice to meet you too. Right away, out of the gate. (laughs) This is already (laughs) stretching my brain knowledge because Uh Maggie knows right away not (laughs) a huge knowledge base when it comes to tile, Mm -hmm. okay? But we're going to do the best we can. Now, tile in itself is like, we're talking about a conversion here, right? Mm -hmm. So if we're not taking tile off, right? We're just putting tile on? I think they said that they're taking out the the, the shower tub paint pan you know it all comes in one piece you may need to redo that yeah you may need to redo all of the board that's behind the shower pan Mm -hmm. a lot of times it's not great when you take it off so you be mindful that that's an added cost to this and can be kind of a nightmare Mm -hmm. Um, always have a plan when you're doing any type of renovations like this especially in your bathroom that you have like how you are going to dispose of things, okay? Oh, true. When people are doing renovations, it's like an afterthought, and it needs to be right in the front of your head, mm-hmm. okay? So you need to make sure that you know how you're going to dispose of things in the wall. You know, if you have mold, how do you dispose of that? Right. What kind of garbage bags you have? Always have canvas bags, by the way. Contractor yeah. bags, 
get contractor what you can bags. actually take to the dump or you, not. Yes, what you can take to the dump or not. Maybe you get one of those. They, 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 a lot of companies now mm-hmm. come, up, instead of getting dumpsters like we used to in the day, mm-hmm. we'll have those big canvas bag yep. things that you can get, and yeah. they'll just grab those for you. Those are really affordable. I think they're like 50 bucks a day even. They're not even that expensive. Yeah, I think you do have to pay for the dump, though. Oh, okay. They charge but, you to, to, to take it to the dump for you. But that's a whole lot cheaper than what yeah. it used to be when you used to have to get just a dumpster. Yeah. And then you would need a, you would need a pickup fee, a drop-off fee, the mm-hmm, dumpster mm-hmm. itself. Do four or $500 just for the dumpster to show up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if it's there for multiple days, sometimes you tack on for each day, you mm-hmm, know? Mm-hmm. And sometimes they minimal. They got to be there for three to five days. So, like, it could be a task. So, all of that being said, think about how you're going to dispose of this stuff in general, okay? Then if we're talking about the tile themselves, what kind of tile you do... I honestly don't know. I will say the things I will stay away from, peel the stick, I would never mm-hmm. go to. I think that's one of the biggest pet peeves I got is people using spiel and spiel and tick. Uh, peel and tick? Peel and tick? <laughs> spiel. Spiel and tick. Spiel and tick. Wait, no, my brain is broken. <laughs> peel, peel and stick. Peel and stick is what I'm trying to say. Don't use peel and stick, Tabitha. Yeah. So I would stay away from that. Now, they do make like adhesives for this that mm-hmm. are going to be better, right? There's various different kinds of adhesives. The kinds that I like are ones that are really mindful of low order. Mm-hmm. Anytime you look with any type of adhesive, keep in mind low order, especially when you're in a nice tight space like a bathroom. If you are doing this work, if you can keep your exhaust fan on in your bathroom, you're going to almost always be better off. Make sure you wear the respirator, those kind of things. Mm-hmm. But the big con to all of this is just like how taxing a renovation in your bathroom is yeah it's one of the hardest ones i will take a living room or a bedroom over a bathroom almost any day Mm -hmm. i think next to a kitchen is the hardest one kitchens are tough bathrooms are a nightmare yeah i think it's because all the things that can go wrong in a bathroom Mm -hmm. you know like bathrooms are once they're done ah they're amazing right (laughs) but getting them there you know also are you gonna need to turn off water Mm-hmm. Are you going to, yeah. if this is your only bath in the house, which I'm assuming, by the way, that that was framed. I think Tabitha said this is the only bathroom, right? I don't, I don't yeah, remember. You're that. also going to need to get a porta potty situation. Mm-hmm. Or what we did when I was a kid growing up, we, we, we put uh, a bath shower down in basement. Oh, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. you can do things like that. So be mindful of those kind of things if you do need to turn off the water. And also be mindful if you turn off the water, it doesn't come back on. Mm-hmm. Just a you know, when things go bad, you need to always have a backup plan. And I think it's better to have a backup plan than not. Yeah. Okay. So even if you think you don't need a porta potty, maybe that's something you might want to think about. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's my that would be my suggestion. Or or if you got a porta potty and then you got a, a membership of a gym where you can take a shower there, mm-hmm. that's another. Gra- I've seen a lot of people do things like that over the years. If you like Planet Fitness is down the road, yeah, maybe that's the route you go if you're living somewhere where you have that option. You know, but sometimes you don't. So keep that in mind. But I think that's all I'm able to give. Is there something you can give here to help out here? I mean, as far as like tile selection when you're doing it yourself, I would honestly not go too crazy with like the shape or the texture of the tile. Like pretty basic. Go pretty basic because you don't want to be dealing with like weird corners or weird shapes that you have to cut. And if you... You know, like some people like those like fancy textured tiles. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, it's just a nightmare to clean. It is. Also, you can't put anything suction on those. Right. So be mindful of how yeah. you take showers. You should think about how to make your life easier, not harder. Yeah. And people Honestly, go for like looks. A they... square, and a basic square tile. Yeah. It'll look basic, but it'll be really functional and a lot easier for yourself to install. Functional and cleaning. Mm-hmm. Think about how easy you want it to be cleanable, right? Yeah. So if we're talking about something that has like a gloss to it, that's the way to go. Yep. Because gloss is always going to be easier to clean than anything that's matted, all right? So mm-hmm. anything that doesn't have like... If you buy cheap, it will be harder to clean. That's how it always is, okay? If you buy a tile that is, like, the cheapest, easiest tile that's, like, going to save you a lot of money, that's great. Going to be a lot easier for you to financially afford. Going to be harder for you to clean and make make more of a nightmare later. Yeah. And keep in mind how you're going to seal this all off, too, right? So, and 
if I, my memory is serving correctly, this is a tub going into a shower, right? Or is a shower yeah. going into uh, a shower? Yeah, a tub going into a shower. Yeah. Going into a shower. Yeah, so that's definitely going to sh- change how you do a lot of things. Mm-hmm. The drain situation is going to be something you really going to want to keep mindful of. It's a big one. This yeah. is a big one. This is definitely you're turning off the water and doing a lot of work over the course of several days, mm-hmm. not just maybe a week or two. It could be. When you're turning off the water leading to your bath bathroom, now um, depending on what what kind of time you got, and if you're going to be able to chip away at it, or if it's going to be like a whole massive renovation that you're going to do, I I always tell people that if that some people think they can go into this and be done in a week, and mm-hmm. I think they're wildly crazy. Oh yeah, uh, only if I, you've done it many times before. I, I think this is the kind of thing where this is a three month job, yeah, and, and I think you should just make three months happen and take your time. But no, there will be a point point in this job where you will think you're over your head. You're always over your head. Mm -hmm. That's the nature of this. You won't be fucking fun if you weren't over your (laughs) head. You know, like, so just be mindful that everybody is always over their head at some point. Yeah. Especially if you're a DIYer. Even when you're a goddamn professional, sometimes sometimes you'll cut into a pipe, you know, and Mm -hmm. you'll instantly think, oh, did I just fuck this up? You know, Mm -hmm. and those feelings are natural. You know, when you're doing all the plumbing, though, when you're doing the plumbing section of this DIY, I would say, even though I do, I do, I'm, I, I support um, shark bite fittings. Mm-hmm. I would say you wouldn't want to do shark bite fittings mm-hmm. if you can avoid not to, if that makes sense. If you're not doing the plumbing section yourself, if you're having that be done mm-hmm. by a professional, I would say that's the route to go. It's definitely worth the lessening of the headache. Sure. Um, but if you're doing the plumbing by yourself and that is something you want to do, and, mm-hmm. and if if there is a lot of plumbing, there might not be for your situation, but there very well could be. Mm-hmm. Shark bite fittings is great in certain situations, but for a massive renovations like this, I would say you're better off thinking long term and going not that route. Okay, if that makes sense. Yes, that's more of a temporary solution. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say it's temporary solution. I would say it can be used long term, but mm. I think that there it's not as it's not as definitive. Like sure. there is a chance it could leak. There is a chance it could go s- south in some direction. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And why risk it? Why ri- why spend all this money and then roll the dice on a shark bit mm-hmm. fitting when you're spending this much amount of money? If you're spending three. To five thousand dollars on a renovation, maybe more. I don't know what the budget or what the range on this is, but if you're spending that much money, right? Mm-hmm. Why take a shortcut yeah. that could cost you twenty five thousand? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, what I'm, I'm, well, I mean, if it's behind your wall <laughs> yeah. and it leaks slowly, slowly, and it destroys all the the boarding behind your wall, you don't know. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So let's keep that kind of stuff in mind. Mindful. I don't think a half measure in this instance is really. Call yeah, for it for sure. Sometimes though, I have used sharp bit fittings when I need to, mm-hmm. um, and it's okay. But if it's in your wall and you can't get to it, I wouldn't do that. Right. So okay, yay! Did I answer <laughs> a question that I didn't think I could answer? Yeah, I think you gave a lot of great points for somebody going into renovation that probably yeah. has never done this before. Yeah, I so. try my best. I'm working on it. I'm currently reading a book all about tile. This nice. is a real thing I did. I'm Look I'm in you pa- expand I'm your in page horizon. I'm in page eight. Okay. So hopefully <laughs> by the end of the month I'll be able to be a little bit more flexible. But this is my ongoing thing where I haven't done this work consistently yeah. like I used to. I used to do this work every single day of every single moment of every day, right? Yeah. And my brain was flexed out where I I sometimes think about how my brain operated before mm. and I think about it now and I don't think my brain is as rehearsed in this stuff as it used to be and now I'm forcing myself to learn more to expand cool. instead of being in my little bubble mm-hmm. of like uh, renter focused sure. DIYs we're gonna get really good at homeowners because at some point I'm gonna own my home house too and I gotta put my mouth where my <laughs> fucking foot has been wait Put my foot with my mouth. Is? <laughs> I don't know what that saying is. What I'm trying to say is the next question, please. <laughs> Hi, my name is Anna Marie. Uh, my pronouns are uh, she, I guess. <laughs> the reason I'm calling, well, of course, first off, I love you. And I 
adore everything that you do, and it really inspires me to try new things. Speaking of new things, we have a doorknob leading to our garage that we don't have the key for. And I was wondering, you know, what's the process of replacing a doorknob? Is it difficult? Is there anything I need to get? Aside from a new doorknob, of course, do you have to measure for that sort of thing? If you already have a how-to on this, I apologize. (laughs) If not, I would love some input. Thank you, and uh, stay awesome. Well, thank you so much for calling in, Anna Marie. I appreciate you. First and foremost, this is an ally point that I'm going to throw out there. When we are saying our pronouns, just go for it, okay? Um, And the reason why I say that is because as a trans woman right now who is facing a lot of prejudice, Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. There is nothing more than a very vocal, strong ally. And I think you're a wonderful human being, Anna Marie. I can just feel it. And I just want to arm you with the most information to support the trans community. And I will say this right now, the more vocal and the more times that you use mm-hmm. openly your pronouns in various situations, the more you open up the conversation to be able to defend and support trans people openly. So thank you so much for calling in. And I hope that little nugget of trans support knowledge helps further you <laughs> in your own journey for supporting the community that i'm a part of anyways so that all being said let's talk about doorknobs <laughs> what a transition and i know a thing or two about transitions oh, yeah okay all that being said maggie before i jump into this mm-hmm. i feel like you're gonna have a lot to say about this right do you have some things that you want to th- like do you have anything to input in this one i mean i'm gonna say what y- is something that you always say and that I have found the most helpful as a homeowner is if you're not sure what kind to get, just take the old one to the oh, store with you. Yeah. <laughs> I actually don't. So there is a way to measure a doorknob. Yeah. Do I remember exactly how you're supposed to do it? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, but I will say this. So doorknobs have a bunch of different components to mm-hmm. it, right? Typically, there is uh, some type of set screw or presser point that you would push on a mm-hmm. doorknob. And sometimes it's with a flathead screwdriver and you push on it and it pops the one side off and then you can take the shield of it off. The shield is what cover up all the mechanism, the hole itself. Once you do that, then you can pull out the other side of the doorknob and it's a lot easier. But then typically you need to just make sure that the shield is the same size shield Mm -hmm. that you get for the next door. Right. So you got your knobs, you got your shield. You got your other knob, and then you have the thing that's inside that's all of the brains of the operation. The latch. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. the latch. Yeah, the latch that's attached to the mechanism themselves. Okay? All of that being said, that it's not necessarily a very difficult job. It could be a little bit of an intricate job, right? Mm -hmm. So I would say you want to take off the whole kits and caboodle. Not just the handle, but the actual mechanism themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay? And here's the keep in mind, okay? Whatever direction the door is opening in, okay? The latch will have a flat side mm-hmm. and a curved side. Whatever direction you're opening the door in, the flat side has to be facing towards that direction. Mm-hmm. So if you're opening it towards you, the flat side of that latch needs to be facing towards you. I'm saying that. Because from experience, <laughs> you will do all this work. You will put the whole thing back together. You uh-huh. put the mechanism in there. You put the latch in the right way, in the way you think is the right way. And then do all this amazing work. <laughs> and then you put it all together and you do it and like, oh, this is amazing. And then you fucking did it the wrong way. And, and no the, matter yeah. what you do, it won't close. That is <laughs> the worst 25 minutes of your life that you've wasted on something so insignificant Mm -hmm. like it like it it kicks you right in the butt it hits you real hard so long as you keep that in mind you'll be good to go i would say that there's a lot of different kinds of doorknobs Mm -hmm. you can always upgrade if it's a round doorknob and you want like uh, a handle that's okay too but just make sure you can go in the most important thing is the diameter of Mm -hmm. that actual well and i think if you i think uh, she said it's a uh, door to the garage. Yes. I know that they come with kits that match the deadbolt. So if yeah. you want it to be the same key, you can also replace the deadbolt because it'll come as a set and then you only need the one 
the one key for the yeah, vault. Yeah, I actually generally forgot that there probably is a deadbolt with this. Mm-hmm. And that being said, the deadbolt is a whole thing that you need to be mindful of as well. So I would go Maggie's route and get the whole kit to make sure you're safe and you're good to mm-hmm. go. But they have a whole bunch of different designs and yeah. different things that you'll like. It's a fairly... I mean, I would say when we're talking about stuff like this, I always err on the side of the medium thing where you're not getting the cheapest, you're not right. getting the most expensive, you're getting right in the middle. Mm-hmm. Because often they're not the easiest ones to install, but they're not the hardest ones to install. And second of all, they're also like fairly durable. They're yeah. going to be, you know, a lot more durable than your cheapest options. Mm-hmm. So. As I say often, you get what you pay for, mm-hmm. right? And in this instance, I think you should probably get somewhere in the medium. So that's going to be like $65, $75 mm-hmm. for probably a kit with the whole thing. If you really want to splurge, then we're talking $150, $140. Yeah. Some people are going to be like, wow, that's a lot for a doorknob. Think about what it does, though. You know yeah, what I mean? Especially for an exterior door. Yeah, an exterior door, especially leading to your garage. Mm-hmm. Because I think there was a study shown a few years ago that one of the most biggest entry points people were breaking into people's homes was through the garage. Yeah, door. Nick and I get mad. Like, yeah. we argue about this all the time because he refuses to lock the garage door because yeah. it's easy for him to walk in, and I refuse to leave it unlocked. Yeah. He's like, well, it's fine. The garage door is shut. I'm like, well, nobody gives a shit about a garage I, door. <laughs> I don't typically want to go on the whole let's poop on Nick train. But <laughs> make sure Nick listens to this one part of the episode. I will make him. <laughs> there are a hundred different ways to break into a garage mm-hmm. through the garage door. There yeah. really is. Yeah. And there are some garage doors. Yours is not one, Maggie. I've been there. I mm-hmm. know that do have mechanisms that make it harder to get into. I'm 90% sure yours doesn't have a latch on the side, right? Mm-mm. Yeah. Not that I want to give away burglars how to break into Maggie's <laughs> home, but there are mechanisms and, and designs that have a latch that goes yeah. that, that locks your garage door. Most do not have that. Yeah. And there's other, there's, there's ways to reset the garage door from mm-hmm. the outside with mm-hmm. an external device. Right. So, if yours is a remote control garage door, you should be thinking about yeah. how to prevent that from happening, right? Some people have used coat hangers and just like going inside with mm-hmm. an endoscope like we were talking about earlier in a last podcast. With an endoscope, yeah, you can do a lot of things. You just drill it in. You go up with a, with a clothes hanger. You yank it. Boom, you're good to go. Mm. And the reason why I know about that is because someone made a video that tagged me in it last year what? and asked me to talk about this. And I was afraid to talk about it in my huge platform to mm-hmm. show people how to break into someone's home. Yeah. But like it is the only and the only way you, you the way that you can prevent that is by using a zip tie. Oh, wow. You just put a zip tie and you latch it there. And then when you, if you really need to like have your garage door go all the way up or something, then mm-hmm. you can just snip it off. But typically it's not really an issue. But it's because of the string that's hanging down yeah, typically. Yeah. You can just zip tie that up and it's not going to be an issue most sure. of the time. So those kind of things are really be mindful of. And I think an exterior door yep. going, I don't think people, the reason why I bring it up is I don't think people think of it as an exterior door. Right. It is an it exterior is door. It is very much an exterior the, door. Literally the way that those doors are designed is an exterior door. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's kind of silly when when people don't take that that seriously. They yeah. really should. But yeah, that's my my little tip and tricks for the day to break into your neighbor's house. Uh, anyways, <laughs> so don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. But also, that being said, Nick really should think about that. And from from your mouth to his ears. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love you, Nick. Your beard is really scratchable, and I appreciate you. <laughs> um, but keep Maggie safe because if you don't, I'm gonna find you, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Because Maggie is my family, <laughs> um, and Izzy's my little nephew. Izzy is Maggie's child, by the way, and Izzy is like my, I like, love that kid. Yeah. So just keep Izzy safe, God damn it. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> this has turned into a Mercury versus <laughs> Nick episode. Okay, that being said, I think that's all I got to yeah. say, Anna Marie. I hope that that helped you. I hope that we did a good job, and I don't think there's anything else I want to say. So right now, we're two for uh, two, for two, and Ziggy is we got zero. three more to go. We are beating <laughs> Ziggy. So good. Let's go. Number three. Hi, Mercury. I love the podcast. 
I am Andy, they, them. I'm just south of you in sunny uh, Chicagoland area. I have a question about long-term maintenance. I've been at my current apartment complex for about three, three and a half years now, and my partner and I just decided to renew our lease, and we're renewing for two more years because that's the cheapest rent. But we were wondering if there was anything that we should be looking into or having maintenance look into right now. Because we have been in our apartment for a while, it's a fine apartment, but it does have several, like, landlord special kind of elements to it, like painting and stuff-wise. But is there something that we should be asking our complex about or we should be, like, cleaning or maintaining ourselves? when we've been in in an apartment this long. And normally I feel like with apartments in our area, people are out within a year or two, but we're gonna be in here for a while. So we wanna make sure that everything's running all right. Anyways, thank you so much, bye. Andy, this is probably my favorite (laughs) question I've gotten all year. I think this is because- It's a great one. Not even a question I've thought about, you know, like what do you do when you live Mm -hmm. in an apartment for like three years and you're gonna be in it for another two? Like what is this maintenance secret you know, <laughs> puzzle that you can put together. And I'm going to say there's a few things right off the bat. I'm going to say clean behind the fridge is like mm-hmm. number one, keeping those conditions in your fridge good. If you got a washer and dryer in there, make sure your dryer vent is like fully cleaned out. Mm-hmm. Uh, make sure that like if your element is going bad in your dryer, like if you kind of sense that like your dryer is taking like a longer oh, time sure. to go, maybe change the element out in there, those kind of things. If you have a air conditioner in your apartment, making sure the screen is changed out. If you got an HVAC, make sure the filter is changed out. Mm-hmm. And then I'm trying to think like other things that you can do yourself or have a maintenance person easily come and do. I mean, there's also a filter more than likely right above your oven. Mm-hmm. Make sure that is changed out too. A lot of people don't know that. So make sure that the oven filter is changed out. That would be really greasy and disgusting. Your vent filter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're usually metal, so you can usually clean mm-hmm. those out yourself and then put it back in. But sometimes you got to replace them. They may be a little dingy. And then I would say, as far as things that you can do yourself or have a maintenance technician do pretty easy, those are the ones that, that come to mind right away. Now, I want you to think about wear and tear of a few things mm-hmm. that may nickel and dime you when you move out carpet Mm -hmm. number one carpet carpet is like always the thing if you have carpet anywhere in your apartment i can almost guarantee almost anywhere in the entire country from my experience you're going to have like carpet that's not meant to be lived in for five years right right carpet that's meant to live in for maybe two Mm -hmm. on the best maybe sometimes they'll say seven years but come on like (laughs) i when we're living in an apartment i i just never see it happen they always go the cheapest route and most of the time they're not even that padded Mm -hmm. they're just like you know they're barely on that subfloor barely on that concrete and they're just like very thinly padded Mm -hmm. and they get torn up and beat up so if you got corrugated carpet, which is like that, almost looks like it's a pattern. Uh, I don't know how to um, e- explain corrugated carpet. If you look yeah. up corrugated carpet, you will know if you got a corrugated carpet. There's, it has a very distinctive look to it. Mm-hmm. But look at those. Corrugated carpet is almost always going to go bad faster. So if you get to a point where you see a lot of wear and tear, you could request a reinstall mm. or even a shampoo sometimes shampoos can go a long ways and extend the life of it sometimes apartment complexes will do this kind of stuff for you and be like yeah i know i want you to keep i want you to be there for another couple of years you know mm-hmm. and be like hey you know we really want to stay here blah blah, blah 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 those kind of things i would also say keep in mind for the blinds it's always easy to request repairs like I want a replacement for blinds. Mm-hmm. I want a replacement mm-hmm. for my curtains while you're living there and you're not right. planning on living out. If you wait until the last month, they will charge you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So doing it early on and then keeping those intact is kind of the route I would go. Mm-hmm. Screens, another one. You can replace screens pretty easy. They make whole screen repair kits. Yep. If you've got screens in your windows. I would definitely make sure you got that in mind. 
But other than that, those are kind of the the big ones. You got your doorknobs and your shower and your, your toilet and all that kind of stuff. But those are pretty. They're gonna they're gonna outlive you. You know what I mean? <laughs> like those kind of stuff will 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 be there long before you were left the apartment and stuff like that. I think I did a. I think I covered everything. That's right? a good checklist. Is there anything else you would sit, you would throw in there? Maybe? I mean, honestly, I think you hit everything that I was thinking of. You know, I've lived in rentals long term before too, and and that's kind of, you yeah. know, obviously there's like you said the the normal plumbing stuff. If there's anything running slow or backing up or yeah, you know, anything like that. Yeah, um, like definitely check the clogs. You know, mm-hmm. like run the water in your sinks mm-hmm. and in your tub. And see how long it takes to back up if it does. If it does not back up in the first, like, 30 seconds to a minute, you're probably fine. Mm-hmm. You know? If it takes longer than that, you you got a big repair. You know, like, if yeah. it takes four minutes to start clogging, that means it's pretty far down. Mm-hmm. And it means that they're going to need a plumber to come in. Most yeah. Of time. So, and I think maybe the toilet seat. The toilet seat takes a lot of bait beating. The cheaper ones, especially the ones in an apartment, oh, yeah, make are, sure it's nice and tight. Yeah, and I would, I would secure. say, I would say you're never bad off to like get yourself a locking or non loosening or anti loosening mm-hmm. toilet seat. We've talked about this before in the podcast before. They're like thirty five to forty bucks, but boy, you, you realize how much you wiggle on a seat when yeah. you get one of those because they don't move; they they lock in place, mm-hmm. and they're weirdly life-changing uh <laughs> those little things it's like when you go from a wired headphone to uh, a bluetooth headphone mm-hmm. you don't realize how life-changing that is until <laughs> you're like oh my god there's nothing around my neck like oh my god <laughs> it's like when we went from a wireless phone in my house to uh, from a corded phone when i was a kid do you remember oh, how sure. oh yeah. my god those corded <laughs> first phones- time having a uh cordless phone <laughs> oh that was life-changing you're like oh man i spent a lot of time in the kitchen <laughs> you know <laughs> okay i hope i answered all the cues in that one did i go do do, I do a good job great job okay ziggy Woo-hoo! you can't get me yet ziggy <laughs> you're trying to keep me down but you can't yeah. <laughs> wait number four here we go hi my name is matt in a t not the bug my pronouns are she her i have an issue where the door to the bedroom had been covered with a sticky non-scratch tape for cats so they wouldn't scratch at the door. Well, this has become covered in lint, and when I try to peel it up on the side, it is taking off the fake wood veneer. <laughs> so I am just wondering, like, I've tried heat, and I've tried to, like, get goo gone under there nothing seems to be working it's only at the bottom part of the door but it's like about 12 18 inches of sticky stuff on two doors as you can tell it's kind of worrying me (laughs) any advice would be helpful thank you sometimes on this podcast i'm giving questions where i hate the answer and Mm. i'm sitting here and i am trying my best to think of other answers and honestly, I, I, I hate to break this to you, but those doors are going to need to be replaced. Yeah. And maybe, maybe we can get lucky here, but there's nothing we are going to try that doesn't potentially damage the door. Mm-hmm. Right? When we're talking about the veneer being damaged, that is like, yeah, that's bad. Yeah. And I'm guessing this is a renter situation, mm-hmm. right? That's what it sounds like from the way that the question was phrased to me. Mm -hmm. So I think that we are in a situation where you're just going to want to tell your landlord and you're going to want to get that out of the way. And I know that's scary and that sucks, but I'm going to tell you right now things happen. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, especially when it comes to adhesive, you know, as a tenant, we're often led down the road where we are told we can't put holes in things. Mm-hmm. So what we do is we use adhesive. Right. Adhesives bond to the things in which are in our homes. Mm-hmm. And it often cause more problems. I would have been fine with a couple nails in yeah, a door that I, I could have like used putty. Plate. Yeah. 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 I would have been fine, especially if it's at the bottom of it. Mm-hmm. If it's at the bottom of the door, maybe you can get away with this. But you're going to need to gouge it out. 
mm-hmm. which means you're going to need to take a scraper. They make glass cleaner scrapers. We actually recently got one. They're kind of dangerous. They're mm-hmm. not the easiest to change the blade out, but they're very sharp, and it might be able to, if a downward motion might be able to gouge it out, but you will take the veneer off with it. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, you can try to heat it up, but all you're doing in that instance is actually making it adhere more to mm-hmm. the wood. In this instance, is work that works really well when we're talking about like, you know, wallpaper adhesive, mm. because that heat is 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 more like moisture, right? right? That steam is going to help with with that. And those been chem- chemicals are like made and designed that way. Mm. These kind of chemicals, especially with that like kind of wood, that wood is like more particle wood, yeah, because it's more than likely a hollow hollow core door, not the greatest wood so it's Mm -hmm. going to definitely stick to that adhesive really badly Mm -hmm. so that would be my suggestion i would say there are products that do make kind of big lofty promises Mm -hmm. i don't know if any of them are going to work and you got to soak them so Mm -hmm. i don't think that's going to work particularly well in this scenario so, I mean, this is a tough one yeah. because I feel like it gives you the worst case scenario. But here's the good news, okay? If you decide that you can't afford to have the apartment complex or the person that you're renting from, if that is the case, or even if you're a homeowner, if you decide that a door is just like having someone do that for you, it's too much money. You can get pre-cut doors Mm -hmm. that are pretty standard. You can go to a hardware store, and sometimes they'll even notch where the hinges are going to go and where the latch is going to go. If you get the measurements, and you can find out how to do all the measurements on a door by going to YouTube, and they'll tell you how to do all that, we're talking 45 bucks to 50 bucks for each door. Pretty affordable. And keep it's the hardware. Just changing out the hardware. Yes, and then keep the hardware from the previous door, and then boom, 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 and you're good to go, and no one will know. Mm-hmm. It's there's a, it's a lot cheaper than you think, and it's a lot easier than you think, but it is scary if you've never done it. Yeah, um, and you just have to make sure that it has all of the notches for the hinges, and in, the latches, and the doorknobs in yeah. the right spots. Right. It's really important to do that. So that would be my. I think you're better off that route than mm-hmm. spending. You know, uh, how much more in chemicals? I yeah. mean, like, you could spend this and that and that and this, and then all of a sudden you're 40 or 60 bucks in it anyways. Yeah. So I think you're better off just replacing the door. If it's a hollow core door, mm-hmm. which means it's a lightweight, nothing really is inside besides cardboard door. So I hope that helps, even though I kind of gave you a heavy yeah. kind of poopy answer. Well, and you kind of mentioned it at the beginning for anybody, you know, I've had to do this because my dog scratches the door as well. And even as a homeowner, we don't want that. But they have, you know, scratch plates that you can, like you said, it's two little screws, one in the top, one on the bottom. And you can attach it to the door. And it's just a, a very thin metal plate so that your animal scratching the door doesn't damage it. But then again, you know, uh, like Mercury said, it's just two tiny screw holes that you can then fill with like some putty and kind of hide more easily. So for if anybody else is also experiencing, you know, animals scratching their doors, that might be a, a safer route to go. But yeah, I think... In in this instance, you know, like you said, the adhesive, people think that it, it is this solution like command strips and things like that. But we really have to be careful where we put it. You know, some fabrics and things like that, it's it's going to come off of. But like doors and wood and hardwood, yeah. things like that, we just have to be careful. It's just heartbreaking because I think landlords set pe- tenants up for this kind yeah. of stuff. And they don't like, again, in this instance, I mean, yeah. I, I just feel like people think they can't put holes in the door without yeah. being repaired. Mm-hmm. And they don't even want to do that. And in reality, that Because the landlord be makes them so afraid of like putting little holes yeah. in things. This so they're is, trying to find solutions, which is, is totally natural. This is why when, I, when landlords talk to me, mm-hmm. I always tell them that right now I'm really on this patro railing yeah. like, like thing where I think we really need to make a push as a culture to bring back picture rails but also when it comes to door i think we need to make a a push to 
understand that hollow core doors Mm -hmm. are more the issue than a solid door. Sure. A solid door is a whole lot easier to patch. And if they would put a hole in a solid core, oh, yeah, and, a, and patch and, and paint, yeah, 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 is it going to cost you one fifty instead of fifty? Yeah, but is it easier to to repair and mm-hmm. to take care of? Yeah, always. Every time a new tenant is moving in, you're replacing re- re- replacing three of the four of the doors. Yeah, and the time it does for that, it's just silly to me mm-hmm. that when when landlords go the route of like the cheapest way possible every time, and I get it. Yeah, I understand, but. You can save money if you buy things in quantity mm-hmm. and you buy them ahead of time before you need them. And uh, typically, a lot of these materials are going to be cheaper now than they will be in five years mm-hmm. because of inflation. So you're better off to get shit now sure. than you are later anyways. So that's my hot take on that. I hope that helps. And I hope that it goes well. I really do. I, yeah. I give you my best And I send you all my love. And poop, poop, poop. (laughs) Hi, Mercury and friends, because I don't know if it's going to be Maggie or somebody else. Also, hi, Maggie. I really like you. My name is Katrina. I use she, they pronouns. I live south of Seattle in Tacoma, Washington. I have two questions. One, I had my electrical updated from the old knob and tube to more modern wiring. I had them move the fuse box into a more central location instead of my bedroom. And now I have holes in my walls from where they did that because they do the electrical, they don't fix up the holes behind themselves. Now, one of my boyfriend's polyamorous helped me fill in the holes and stuff and, and, and do the ackle and, and the sanding down is going to be a whole thing because I am autistic and that is my sensory nightmare. I'm trying to get my other boyfriend to help me with that, but it's on the, it's on a very long list. My question though is, is like, The only solution for dealing with the fact that there is a hole in a gray wall that I've been spackled over is to just repaint. Am I correct? There's not like, I don't, like, I look at this hole in the wall and I'm just like, I don't want to repaint everything for this one stupid hole in the wall, but also it looks so bad. And there are other chunks of things that have gotten gouged out of my walls for various reasons that need to get fixed in a similar manner, and it's, again, going to be a do I have to paint the whole thing situation, and it's frustrating. Secondly, I have a a one-and-a-half story house. It has three bedrooms. Two of those are in the upstairs attic space. Uh, One of my boyfriends lives in one of them right now, and his friend is living in the other one, and he's renting that room out from me. And I've, I've been renting these extra rooms out basically since I moved into my house 10 years ago, and... I don't know if that makes me a landlord. I think it does. But, like, I want to do what I can to make that living space good and safe and everything for the people renting from me. But I don't have a lot of, like, experience in rental situations because I've mostly lived with friends in a variety of ways. I've only ever lived in one apartment. So what I am wondering is, like, right now I have, like, an emergency ladder for that room. I have a CO2 monitor in the house. When they did the electrical, they put in smoke detectors that would go off for literally no reason. And since the the dog who was living in my house at the time would freak out any time they chirped, uh, those got destroyed because they were one of the ones. With the okay, yeah, bathroom. yeah, yeah. We get it. You're a landlord. <laughs> <laughs> I love this whole episode. I'm just like leaning towards poop on landlords. And Katrina's like, <laughs> I think I'm a landlord. <laughs> but also, Katrina had such a great question. It was very detailed. Unfortunately, we could only, we found out today that we have a limit to how long these voice messages can be. <laughs> and we cut you off at three minutes. <laughs> so sorry. Apparently, we find out something new every day, Maggie. Uh-huh. Today, we found out. Stop being so long-winded, <laughs> Katrina. <laughs> hey, she's my first fan. Yeah. Don't be hard on her. <laughs> right. She's Maggie's first. You have so many fans. People always call up and, and text us and say, hi, Maggie and Mercury. You're always first. And that's not true. Uh, <laughs> all of that being said, let's talk about the, the knobs and tubes, and then we'll talk about the landlord stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay? The knobs and tubes. 
So I, I wanted Maggie to have an idea of mm-hmm. what we're talking about. So I quickly looked up knobs and tubes so Maggie could visually see it. Maggie now, I think, has a, a fairly yeah. understanding idea. How would you describe the knob and tube situation and removing that? Yeah. So, I mean, I know knobs and tubes, you know, there are like junction points throughout the wall. And so what you showed me was like there's like every few feet there's a hole in the wall yes. where they had to go in and take out the knob and tube wiring. So, yeah, I, I was thinking of just like one single hole in the wall. But you're right. It's like yep. it's like you know, every two, three feet, there's another, you know, hole where they had to cut open the drywall to get the wiring out. It's extensive. Yeah. It's extensive. Now, here's some ways around that. Here's the good part about knobs and tubes. It's usually straight lines. Mm -hmm. It's usually pretty. So now what you can do, get a one by two, put it in one of the holes, Mm. runs it all as far as you can, Mm -hmm. right, to the next couple of holes. And then screw it in there. Now what you just did is effectively make the backer that you're going to be able to use for the drywall that you're going to add. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So so one of the patches yeah. I talk about a lot mm-hmm. is the plank kind of patches where you put like a one by two or something in the wall. You screw it to the drywall, but a little bit of it is still showing through the hole. Mm-hmm. So when you add in the next patch, you can screw that patch into that that piece and now it's like holding itself in place without having to do all the mudding mm-hmm. and that will at least get you to a place where you now you're not you don't have 500 holes in the wall right and that's a lot easier now you're still going to need to do the mudding you're still going to need to use like fiber tape or drywall mm-hmm. tape in order to patch it all up but now at least you have the holes are gone mm-hmm. and i think that's to be your first thing is just Put drywall, like cut a whole bunch of pieces. They're usually universal size or close to universal size. You know, maybe you can go to the hardware store and ask, hey, can you cut up like, uh, you know, like 10 or 12, you know, pieces, maybe even more. It might be more than that, mm-hmm. depending on how, how big your house is. But you can ask, hey, can you do me a favor and take this drywall and cut it? Like I need 25 two by three pieces of uh, drywall and mm-hmm. the guy is probably going to say well that's unusual or he's going to be like oh i got knobs and you got uh <laughs> yeah you got the knobs right yeah 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 i have the knobs you know <laughs> that kind of thing so i think go that route mm-hmm. and that might help okay that and that way you can do the same thing with the wood if you don't want to put one big piece in there right then uh to do that way you could just get a whole bunch of blanks to do the same thing just cut a whole bunch of those up put one in at a time mm-hmm. you know and then you'll have a whole section you'll have a whole bunch of them filled up at least you know Mm -hmm. the holes are not just gaping for you that would be where i would start does that make sense maggie yeah i think so would you agree with that assessment yeah i mean it it sounds like you're you're more treating it like one big patch like by using the one board and being able to like screw all the little pieces of drywall to that one board you're kind of making a makeshift stud it's not really a stud in this scenario and i hope it's not load bearing (laughs) it's not unfortunately (laughs) when you're looking for a stud you might think it's a stud later on but i mean in this instance i mean nomin tube is not ideal anywhere Mm -hmm. so like it's it's a pain in the boot you know but all that being said the little plank idea though even that that's going to take you you could do all that by cutting it all up and putting it all, you could probably do that in less than an hour and do yeah. all those. Yeah. And then at least you have that and you can do one patch at a time whenever you got the energy. And I'm going to tell you right now, you are going to be an expert at <laughs> repairing drywall uh, holes mm-hmm. by the end of it. And again, we have a YouTube video that's all about this that's on my YouTube I will link it in the description. Yeah, we'll link it in the description. <laughs> it is a really good one, and it's very extensive. It's like 45 minutes. But it's going to teach you every single aspect you need to know when it comes to drywall repair, especially patches like this. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's good. Now, for you wanting to be a landlord. <laughs> um, now, how, how do you become a landlord is quite my thing. You need to understand tenant laws Mm -hmm. okay in your area specifically it's very hard for me to be like this is the thing you got to do and you got to do this and you know you were talking about you know alarms and you were talking about detectors Mm -hmm. all that stuff is really valid and true and like having a ladder to get out all those things are really true and valid 
but a lot of that is specialized for where you are in the mm. county uh, in, 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 in the country rather and it's very specific to the city or county of that state too so being mindful of what your rules and regulations are there is a lot of materials that are out there that you could do, including books, okay? Mm. I've never read any of these books, so I don't know if they're written, uh, they were written by dickheads. But <laughs> my, I'm going to just go on a limb and say most are, okay? <laughs> but as long as you read this material and learn how to do this and be mindful of the tenant and commutative to what they specifically need, right? You know, we can talk about smoke detectors and ladders and alarms, all we want. Mm -hmm. But what's the most important thing is meeting where they're at and having an individualized experience for the tenant. Mm -hmm. Make sure they feel empowered. Make sure they feel like they can actually talk to you about stuff. You know, um, even if you are a friend of somebody, yeah. there should be a way to do this in a way that's streamlined, like a maintenance request. Yep. How do I do that? How do I email you? All of those things should be written out because no matter what, it shouldn't be all verbal. Mm -hmm. They should have a way where they can write to you and take care of you and have this commutative. And also, how do they do rent? And mm -hmm. what kind of do rent? How do they do rent? And that should all be written down to protect you and to protect them. Yeah. And those kind of things should be written. A lot of times we do this thing where we're just helping friends out, mm -hmm. you know, and we're just doing the thing. And then all of a sudden we wake up one day and we realize we're a landlord. I mean, that does happen. People, yeah. this, I get this kind of question all the time. And I will say that is good, but you got to be mindful that you're the one with the power dynamics. You're the yeah. one with all the playing cards. You're playing poker, but you're also the dealer, mm -hmm. right? And you got to be mindful that that's the scenario that you're putting us. You got to un fair power imbalance initially when you sit down at that card table mm -hmm. and yeah you could have a good game and still have a dealer who's playing you could but by the very proxy of it it's a little bit of an imbalance right away you know you never know if that dealer is you know um you know playing you you know mm -hmm. and and there's a whole bunch of cards up their arm you don't know you yeah. know and i think that in this scenario it's very similar where the tenant is by the very proxy, they're in a vulnerable situation mm -hmm. where you're holding the deck of cards. You're the one dealing with what they got. And now they got to trust that you have the best intentions. You got to prove it to them. They can't just be, but you can't just be like, well, well, I'm a good person. No, I do all these good things. Yes. But you also hold all the power. And that's yep. hard. You know, so be mindful, Katrina. I think just by how much time and effort you put into that voice message i know that you got a heart of gold i know you got a heart of gold and you like maggie which means you're doing something right so i appreciate it and i hope i answered those questions pretty good yeah what do you think maggie i mean i think i i agree you know even when you're close friends with somebody and you trust them i'm always down for a contract between the two of you to put it in writing and just to protect both of you because it also protects the other person and I, not just I you. I feel like that was very pointed at me. <laughs> no. uh, I feel like Maggie <laughs> just <laughs> looked at me in square in the <laughs> eye and said, I always got to have a fucking contract with you, don't I, you crazy person? That's what Maggie said. That's what Maggie but said. But it makes you feel safer. It does. Knowing that and you're protected. I, and, I, and I will say this, Maggie and I have been like best friends for the last year and a half. And Maggie and I have contracts for every single fucking thing, basically, yeah. right? Like, yeah. every time we can do a contract, we do a contract. Because it's good, right? Because It's nice to have it spelled out, and there's no questions. Yeah. And, and again, like, yeah, it protects you, but it also protects the other person. Yeah, I so think... mutually protective. Always be aware of the power dynamics, yeah. right? And it's just, it's best, it's the best way to be able to operate in life in general. Mm -hmm. Be aware of the power imbalances yeah. that are operating in and be mindful and respectful of those. And yeah, for sure. Yeah. There we go. Okay. I think I'm five for five and I think Ziggy is still hired here. I'm not going <laughs> to, I don't think I want to fire Ziggy. I think they're doing... she's my assistant. She's not going Whoa! anywhere. <laughs> Whoa! I got your back girl. <laughs> <laughs> All that being said, I think this was a wonderful podcast. What a, gr these were great questions. Um, I was very nervous, but we, Ziggy did <laughs> a <too>. great job. <laughs> this is a great job stretching my knowledge and making things happen. But all that being said, if you have any pet peeves, 
or things that we answer that you think that you could have done better. Or if you have life hacks or tips and tricks you want to give out, you can call the podcast at 608-205-8768. Or you can text us at 608-205-8768. And you can always call in with your own questions to the very same number. And maybe you'll hear your voicemail or text read on the podcast. As always, I just want to say a big thank you to Maggie Conrad for putting up with me uh, <laughs> and um, the wonderful Matthew Allen Hag for making this episode happen. Thank you so much for listening. And remember, you're worth the time it takes to learn a new skill. Bye-bye. The theme song for the Handyman Hotline was written by Rody Walker. The questions were picked out by our production assistants, Ray and Basil. And the sound was engineered by Matthew Allen Hag. Thank you for listening. See you next time. If you enjoyed this episode, please help us keep the pirate ship alive by supporting our sponsors, the wonderful iFixit. They fight for your right to repair and makes really cool tools in the process. If you need to fix your phone, laptop, or even a vacuum, iFixit has thousands of parts, tools, and free guides to make your life a little bit easier. So grab your hammer and nails and paint your nails if you want to. You're worth the time it takes to be you. Teach you how to